In this last class about divide and conquer, we will talk about a very interesting problem referred to as the closest pair of points. It's more challenging than the problems we discussed in the last few classes, but it's also uh, giving us a new way to think about the design of algorithms. It is covered in section 5.4 of your uh, textbook. The problem itself is very simple. Imagine that we have the two-dimensional plane, the Euclidean plane, and uh, somebody gives us n points. We want to find the pair of points that are closest together at the smallest Euclidean distance between them. If I have two points with these coordinates, the Euclidean distance between them is... This problem shows up in many applications, sometimes unexpected applications. In graphics, where you are, when you are doing rendering of objects and so on, very often you need to know the, the pair of points that are closest to, together. And there are several other applications in geographic information systems and, and other things. And when we design algorithms is to ask ourselves, what is the brute force way of solving a problem, right? Uh, that gives us, in some sense, uh, a, a running time that we know we can get, but ideally we would like to do better than that. So obviously in this case, if we check the distances between all pairs of points, then we can find um, the minimum such distance. How long would that take? It would be theta, big theta, n squared, because the number of pairs of points is n choose 2. How can we do better than that? You may ask yourself, what is better than that? Uh, for instance, uh, if we have an algorithm that is big O and log n, that would be a big achievement. Now, which are the uh, operations that can be done in big O and log n? We already know that we can do sorting in big O and log n. So if we design an algorithm that does one or two sorting operations, a constant number of sorting operations, that is acceptable and it wouldn't really go beyond the big O and log n. Or we can, we can use an algorithm that is faster than big O and log n. For instance, last time we saw how you can compute the median in linear time. Now, you can also ask yourself, if you want to solve this problem with a divide and conquer algorithm recursively, what kind of recursion gives you big O and log n? As you know, this recursion, where we split the problem into two problems of roughly equal size, n over 2, plus some linear time to combine the solutions, that would work. That would give us um, big O and log n. And so this suggests the kind of divide and conquer algorithm we should be looking for. The last thing I want to say is you should always um, ask yourself uh, when you are doing divide and conquer algorithms, what is the base case? What is the case that you can solve, uh, not recursively, but by uh, just brute force computation? So obviously, if I have n equal 3, uh, just 3 points or, or less, I don't need to use recursion anymore. I, I can just um, calculate the distance between these three pairs of points and find out which pair is closer. So we are interested in what happens when n is larger than 3. Any recursion that we do will cover this case because we already know how to solve the base case. So based on what we discussed at the previous page about the recursion that we want to set up, the question is how do we split the input, these endpoints, into two sets that are roughly uh, n over 2 points. If you think about it, we could try to order the points based on either the x-coordinate or the y-coordinate. And after we sort the points in that way, we can take the first half, um, say in terms of x-coordinate, and uh, let's call this set q, and the second half, again based on the x-coordinate, let's call this set r. So, if we do that, we have two sets of points, Q and R, that are uh, of, of roughly um, the same number of points, n over 2. Now, to sort the points based on the x-coordinate, as you know, we can do it in big O and log n. So Px here again is the ordered list of points based on the x-coordinate 
as you see p2 comes first then p3 then p6 and so on and i have noted here not only the name of the point but also the location of that point the order of that point in the list it will come handy uh, a bit later and it doesn't really cost us anything to, to compute now it turns out that we will also need later in the algorithm the um, ordered list of points based on the y coordinate so let's go ahead and also compute that uh, initially in the algorithm as a form of pre-processing we are doing two sorting operations both of them big O and log n to get the points sorted based on the x-coordinate and based on the y-coordinate. I repeat, however, that we have split the points in these two sets, q and r, based on the x-coordinate. So this is the ordered list of points based on the y-coordinate. So let's see what we have uh, done so far. We have found a way, after some initial uh, sorting operations to split the input into two equal sizes the set of points Q and the set of points R we have done the splitting based on the X coordinate of the points so now we can start in some sense writing code right we already know how we can start this um, recursion function the initial function can be called closest pair, right? So we are giving a set of points P, N points. And as we said, we sort the points based on the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. So we get these two ordered lists of points, PX and PY. It takes us big O and log N to do that. And this is now the point that we are um, calling our recursive function. Let's call it uh, closest pair recursive or, or CPR for short it receives as arguments these two sorted lists of the points based on the X and the Y coordinates and it returns back the idea is that it should return back the two points that are closest together P0 star and P1 star that would be our final answer now here we can start writing our uh, recursive uh, function, this CPR function. We already discussed how the base case of this function looks like. If the number of points is less than 3, then we solve it by computing all the three pairwise distances and finding out which one is the closest. So there, there is no recursion here. In the other case, where, P, where the number of points is more than 3, we do this splitting of the points in the sets Q and R and let's define as QX the ordered list of points in Q ordered based on their X coordinate so this would be and also the points in Q ordered in the Y coordinate we already know um, this uh, ordering based on the sorting we did earlier and similarly, for the points in the right side, the set R, we uh, have the ordered list based on the X coordinate and based on the Y coordinate. So now that we have these four ordered lists, it takes us only linear time to construct them based on uh, from the sorted lists PX and PY. Now we can call this same recursive function, the CPR function, first on the points in Q, which is what we do here, and in the points in R, what we do here. So if T of N is the time it would take for the whole function to run, this call would take T N over 2 because it only works on the points in Q. And this would only take t n over 2 because it would only work on the points in R, right? And these two functions, they would return the closest pair of points in Q, in this side, and the closest pair of points uh, in this side. So what is missing here and what will keep us busy in the rest of this um, class is how to combine these solutions. 
if you know that the closest pair of points in Q, let's say, is P2 and P6, and if you know that the closest pair of points in R is P4 and P5, how can you figure out which uh, pair of points is, is closest across all of the set of points? If you think that you will just compare this distance with that distance, then you are wrong. Why? Because it is possible that the pair of points at the smallest distance is such that one point is in Q and the other point is in R, for example, P6 and P1. So as we will see, we have to do some extra work to find out how to combine these two solutions. We will cover that part in the second part of this uh, video, 9.2.